هل This is Farham Garbazlo, I'm a sleep doctor from California, goes to San Francisco. Today we are going to talk about herbal sleep aids and also over-the-counter sleep aids. There has been a lot of times that you might uh, want something for tonight, you don't have access to doctor, or the situation might be not so hard or so complex that you want to see a doctor, but you want something to help you sleep. There has been a lot of different meditations that used. Today we talk about the most common ones. Um, there are some over-the-counter medication that you can use, and there are also herbal medications that you can use. I have experience with both personal experience and on patients. Um, it is true that sometimes, even as a sleep specialist, I have to consider using over-the-counters because that might be the best option with the least side effect. Um, or even sometimes uh, you have recommended herbal medications. You have seen different things on the market like z or Tylenol PM or uh, Brand New Fresh or a lot of medications are on the market. First, we want to talk about melatonin. Melatonin is really um, highly used recently in the last five, six years. I keep getting more and more questions about it. Melatonin is a chemical that is um, natural to your body. Your body uses melatonin to uh, regulate cycles of the sleep. However, with certain um, strategies that we can use melatonin, it can bring a sleep to you. Um, but like I said, melatonin uh, regulates the sleep cycle. So if you take it around two hours before expected the sleep time, that is almost around the time that you normally fall asleep. For instance, if you normally fall asleep at 11 o'clock, but now you want to sleep at 10.30, yes, melatonin would be a good strategy. But if you normally sleep at 11 o'clock and suddenly you want to sleep at 8, first of all, that is not a good strategy in general, and melatonin will not help that much in that situation. In any rate, if you are... A good candidate to use melatonin, there are two conditions that I always um, remind patients uh, be cognizant about. One is you have to not take too much melatonin because it overrides the system. The, the second condition is that uh, you want to take the melatonin around 90 to 120 minutes before usual and expected sleep time, plus or minus 30 minutes like I said, 90 to 120 minutes. And that way, if you use the low dose, which is three milligram, five milligram, I normally don't recommend 10 milligram, but in the market there's 15, 13, things like that. Um, um, that could help some, some of the people. On higher doses, melatonin does have a very uh, mild hypnotic effect. That means you, it makes you sleepy, but it dysregulates your sleep-wake cycle. So you're not going to be a happy camper at that point. Different um, forms of the medication does not make any difference, in my opinion. Also, um, as I said, melatonin is not a good medication for everybody. Another issue that actually is true for every over-the-counter medication is that they are not FDA regulated. So based on how the manufacturer utilizes the um, dosing the standard, they are as good as they come. So um, some of the manufacturers came together and put a regulatory body that is self-regulatory for themselves. That is a good thing, but it still is not as good as FDA coming and regulating you. So they are basically self-regulated and the dosings might not be exactly correct and the dosing might not be exactly correct different different manufacturers or precise especially when you get out of america and manufacturers maybe um, third world countries or other places we will definitely have more problems with dosing of a medication that is not regulated um, another group of medications are um, roots and flowers. I have personal experience both with valerian root and with uh, chamomile. Both of them are used both for anxiety and sleep um, 
induction, the effects of mild. If you look at the data, every time I used the um, valerian root for me, the effect was not mild. It was pretty strong and I did fall asleep. Uh, for chamomile, the same way, um, it's used for induction of sleep and also getting a better sleep and to decrease anxiety. Both of these um, herbals do have a mild to moderate effect on you. Um, sometimes if you take large doses, the next day you will be still um, um, sleepy, but that's something that you might not want. A reminder about um, this kind of supplement is that we do know that some herbals have capacity to hurt you. On low doses, chamomile and valerian are not going to hurt you, but you have to be aware that especially I do not recommend taking herbals when you are on other medications because it may interact with metabolization of other medications. So these solutions are for somebody who is not on a lot of other medicines or on that day or on that period of few days does not have to take other medicines. Otherwise, I personally don't recommend them. Um, Over-the-counter medications are all based on um, the histamine and antagonism. They're all allergy medications. The most common ones that is used, um, I would say 90% of the time, are either diphenhydramine or um, doxylamine. Doxylamine is uh, marketed as Unisom and Good Sense, also a sleep aid. And uh, diphenhydramine has been used uh, by itself, like Benetril, or has been used in uh, other combinations like Tylenol PM or Advil PM. There was some controversy about the effect of it and is it really effective or not, at least for a good portion of the patients, it is effective. You might be somebody that it's uh, that diphenhydramine doesn't have a good sleepiness side effect on you because it's really a side effect that we are using as an effect here. Um, however, there are some patients that diphenhydramine helps them uh, pretty well. And uh, however, there are patients that diphenhydramine helps them uh, pretty well. And um, um, it's it's okay to try it a couple of times to see how it helps you. You have to be alerted or reminded that uh, all these um, remedies and sleep aid home medications over the counters are not good for long-term use and you want to use them only if you need it for a few nights. For example, you just came back from a trip and you have some jet lag or um, you know, something is bothering you in your personal life and you can't go sleep for a few nights and maybe that helps. But long term, um, it's best to ask a doctor what is a good solution. Additionally, I do not recommend more than manufacturer recommended amount of diphenhydramine and oxylamine. They are antihistamine and they do have a, a small um, toxicity uh, range, so easily with taking several pills uh, in a night or less pills, but more than one over a period of few days, it can uh, definitely get to toxic range and they can be pretty poisonous or toxic when, when you take them more than what is intended. So that's something that you want to uh, remember. If there is any questions, please uh, put it as a comment. I will try to answer all of them. Also, if you want to talk to me, go to healthysleepcare.com and uh, from there you can make an appointment. We do have telehealth as well. As we say in Healthy Sleep Care, heal your nights, live your life. Thank you very much for your listening and uh, I see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.